We're back with another battle report, where the newly rebalanced Death Guards take on the game-dominating might of the Adeptus Custodes. Do the Death Guards have any chance? Let's find out and start by taking a look at the teams. First up is Jester's Custodes. My Custodes kill team is made up of two fire teams, two Custodes each, and I've upgraded one of them to be the leader. They are all equipped with Guardian Spears, and I have spent my equipment points to give them all Misericordias, which allows them to roll a d6 after fighting in combat, and on a 3+, plus causes two mortal wounds. They're already pretty nasty in melee, but with the resilience of the Plague Marines, two mortal wounds could be the difference between taking an operative out of action or leaving them standing. The Talons of the Emperor Kill Team have Seek and Destroy, or Security as their tac op archetype, but since the Plague Marines are tough to kill, I'm taking Security tac ops, Hold the Line, Damage Limitation, and Plant Banner. Okay, I know I'm crazy for taking Death Guard against the Talons of the Emperor Kill Team, but we're not going to let a silly fact like that ruin a good time. Plus, it's fun to try, and in the two practice games we had before this battle, the Death Guard actually eked out both a draw and a very close loss. With that said, I've started by giving the Plague Champion a Power Fist and Plasma Pistol as I feel I'll be needing some heavy hitting gear in this game. Keeping with this theme, I've taken an operative with a Plasma Gun which I'll need to supercharge a lot to make a dent in the Custodes armor. For my third specialist I've taken a Fighter because I don't have an appropriately based model with a Blight Launcher. Nevertheless, he's actually performed relatively okay in the practice games. In this game, he'll mainly be an objective bearer though. Rounding off the list, we have an Icon Bearer with Bolter and Mandatory Plate Belt to help keep the team moving at an acceptable pace. And finally, we have two Warriors with Bolt Guns. The addition of an extra Warrior following the Balance Pass has definitely helped the Death Guard with their resilience, and having an extra Bolter makes malicious volleys more worthwhile. Even though they can't really make as much use of it as regular Chaos Space Marines, due to not being able to take a heavy bolter. Still, they've done good work against the Custodes in practice games, but it's dependent on decent dice rolls. That's it for the team itself, there was no way in hell I was taking Seek and Destroy Tactical Ops against Custodes, so I ended up choosing Security. I drew Hold the Line, Seize Ground, and Plant Banner. In today's game, we're playing the Seize Ground mission found in the Critical Operations Mission Pack in the Core Rulebook. An objective securing based scenario this mission's particular design involves capturing objectives that you control at the end of each turning point, instead of claiming them during the firefight phase with an action. Operatives are then free to move away from the objective as it remains under your control until an opposing operative captures it. At the end of each turning point, if you control two or more objectives, you gain a victory point, and an additional victory point if you control more than your opponent. Additionally, the kill zone has two halves. Capturing objectives in the opponent's half of the kill zone is worth additional victory points. After we set up the terrain, the board looked like this. The Custodes deployed in the blue area and the Death Guard in the red. Unfortunately, this is not an ideal mission for the Death Guard. Even though they have more bodies, they don't have the speed to control the board which would be my normal strategy to beat Custodes. To that end, my plan is to group up as many models as possible so that they can be buffed by the play bell, and then move forwards, capturing objectives whilst concentrating firepower on one enemy model at a time. I've designated the building directly opposite my forces as the seize ground objective, and I should be able to plant my banner here as well. Both Jester and I chose the free dash manoeuvre as our pre-game scouting option. She begins the game with the initiative, and I've elected not to spend any command points on strategic ploys this turn. I'm starting the first round with the initiative, and I'm not going to use any strategic ploys this turning point. That means I'll take three command points into the first turn. With only four operatives, I'm going to deploy in a manner that allows me to claim as many objectives as quickly as possible in the first turning point, and take advantage of my speed over Gregor's operatives. With that in mind, I've deployed one operative where he can move up and claim objective 6, one can move up and claim objective 2, while the third operative can move up and claim objective 4. My fourth operative will be used to support either flank. This Custodes is going to do a normal move up to the barricade, which is well within his range, and then he's going to hunker down behind that barricade. The Icon Bearer is going to kick things off for the Death Guard. He's going to start the turn 
by activating his Plague Bell for one action point. He's then going to use his next two action points to move Dash up to the doorway here. That's his turn. Custody's leader is going to scramble over this terrain and then do a little dash to get within a circle of the center of the objective, but being more than a circle away from the walls. This plague marine with the bolter is going to scramble over this scrap pile and then dash and hide behind the barricade. This Custodes is going to scramble over this scrap heap and then dash up to the doorway of this ruin. Because the Icon Bearer is ringing his bells like a madman, all the Plague Marines within range of him have an extra circle of movement. So this one with the bolter here is going to move three circles and a dash to this side of the door right there. As Custodes is going to do a normal move, giving up a circle to go through this barrier and a dash to get in cover, but to be within circle of the centre of the objective. So we've just pre-measured the play fighter's movement. He is going to move through the door, three circles, and then dash just to the other side of this barricade. The play champion is just going to move through the door of these ruins and stop on the other side here. Final activation for turn one, Plague Marine of Plasma Gun is going to move dash to here. At the end of turning point one, both the Death Guard and the Custodes hold two objectives each, granting each side one victory point. We've had a fairly even start to the game. I've got the initiative going to turning point 2, so I'm going to start bringing down weight of numbers against the single Custodes operative in my part, starting with the Plasma Gunner. I'm anticipating getting into combat to finish him off, so I'm spending a command point on Hateful Assault. I'm also revealing the Hold the Line Tactical Arc. I've lost the initiative going into turning point 2, but I was able to score a victory point last turn. I will be spending 2 of my 4 CP on Aegis of the Emperor, which allows me to choose to take normal damage instead of critical damage until the end of the turning point, and Peerless Warriors, which allows each of my operatives to perform up to 2 shoot or fight actions during their activation. I'm revealing Hold the Line and Damage Limitation for my tack offs. My operative on the right flank is heavily outnumbered, so I'm going to try and pull him back to safety. I'd rather not lose an operative this early in the game. My operative on Objective 2 will move up and try to claim Objective 1. My leader and the last Custodes will try and take out the Plague Marine on Objective 3. The Plague Marine with the Plasma Gun is going to swap out his order for an Engage order. He's going to climb up this part of the ruin here, it's one and a half circles tall, so round that to two circles. He's then going to move a circle here and then dash to the window here. Alright, so he is now going to fire a supercharged plasma shot into the custodies down on the street. That's Cox. So I'll reroll this one. And I'm going to spend a command point to reroll this one. Not the best shooting in the world, that's two normal hits. You have one die in your armor save. I'm just going to set aside my single die for... One goes that. through, you take five wounds. The Custodius that was just shot at is going to change over to an engaged order and is then going to shoot at the Plague Marine with the Plasma Gun. Four shots, hitting on twos. All hit, but just normal. I'm going to set aside a die as a regular save. One goes through. Three damage. Rolling disgusting and resilient. Three wounds go through. 
Second shot, another four shots hitting on twos. Another four hits. Setting aside diamond cover. Three passed, another one goes through. Three wounds. Disgustingly resilient. Loses one. He's then going to move through this barricade and just hop around this corner to try and get into some sort of cover. The Icon Bearer is going next. Very simple turn. He's going to ring his plate bell and activate his Icon of Decay. This Custodes is going to do a normal move up to the edge of that barricade and will then shoot into the Plasma Gunner in the room. Four shots, getting on twos. Okay, another four shots. Normal hits. Setting aside a normal save. That will be six. No, that'll be nine wounds. This pains me. But I'm going to do a command point reroll. Always swap out the dice. <laughs> Every time. Never works. <laughs> Disgusting resilient saves. First of all, that one's pretty cocked. That's a lot of one and twos. Thankfully, I've got the icon of the K active, so I'm going to re roll all of those. Okay, that's a bit more like it. So he takes five wounds, putting him down to three. Second shot, another four. Hitting on twos. One crit and three normals. That's inside normal save. How many wounds is that? Five, uh, eleven. Eleven is definitely resilient rolls. Yeah, they're so saving him. Okay, he is gone. Play Moon of Bolter is going to fire the custodies in the distance. Threes. Two crits and two normals. Good roll. Okay. Three saves. Two up. Ooh. So you blocked one normal. Two normals. No, you blocked two normals. Two crits go through, but it does normal damage, so six wins. Putting it down to seven. Now going to move Dash around the corner of the ruins and take cover behind this door. This Custodes is going to move and then dash to this barricade in order to be able to claim that objective at the end of the turn. This Marine is just going to dash slightly to over here. And he's now going to fire his bolter through the window at the wounded. Studies. One crit, one normal. I will assign one normal. Block it all. Block it all. And now he's going to move roughly back to where he was. My leader is going to move and then dash to be within claiming range of that object. We've pre-measured this. Using his boosted movement from the plate bill, the fighter is going to move three circles round here, through the door, and then dash to here. Play Champion, also using his boosted movement, is going to move one, two, three circles plus a dash to here. 
So we can join within the circle center. And now he's going to fire supercharged plasma pistol shot into the custodes. Hitting on two. Two normals, two crits, you have one armor save. You are in cover, so you might as well automatically assign that. Blocking this one. You only take normal damage, so that's 15 wounds. <laughs> only 15 wounds. Well, unfortunately, that is the end of that custodies. At the end of turn two, the Death Guard have lost a single Marine, their Plasma Gunner, and hold two objectives, one of which is in the opponent's kill zone half, granting them two victory points, putting them up to three total. The Custodes have also lost an operative, but hold four objectives, two of which are in the Death Guard's kill zone half, granting them an additional four victory points for a total of five. Alright, I managed to take out Custodes Warrior, reducing the opposing side by 25%, but unfortunately my first casualty was my Plasma Gunner, which is not part of a winning strategy. The Custodes are in a more advantageous position here, but I should be able to safely plant my Banner this turn, and then focus on capturing more objectives. Unfortunately, I did lose an operative, which is always a blow, but I was able to take out the plasma gunner, which is excellent. Plasma guns can one-shot a custodies, and they make me nervous. I've got the initiative back, and I'm spending 2 CP on Aegis of the Emperor and Peerless Warriors again. My plan is to try and stay mostly in cover, and hold the objectives I have. If I see the opportunity to take out the champion, I'll take it though, since he has the last remaining plasma weapon. I'm not revealing any more tack ops. Start of the third turn, my leader is going to do a charge move into the Plague Marine with the knife there. Due to some technical difficulties, we didn't actually end up catching the dice rolls for this combat, but you don't need to see the dice rolls to accurately guess what happened next. After that very successful melee combat, my leader is now going to dash back into cover. Being just within triangle of the scrap pile, the play champion is going to scramble over. Be within triangle the scrap pile here. He will then dash just to about here, making sure he is within. So and then he's going to dig in for a command point. Next activation, this Custodes is going to make a charge move through this door and into the champion. I thought I was just out. Go for it. Five attacks, hitting on twos. All right, so that's three crits and two normals. Hitting on threes. Okay, four normals and a crit. I will parry your critical. I'm going to parry one of your normals. Okay, I'm gonna strike you for seven. Gonna roll some disgusting resilience just off camera. He takes five of those wounds. I will then parry the other normal. And then I will strike for another seven. So disgusting resilient off camera. Takes another five wounds down to three and then he's going to hit you twice doing ten. Okay, putting me down to eight. Here's Recordia, rolling one d6 on a three, two mortal wounds. He takes one. Second fight attack. Two crits, two normals. Oof. 
less good. Three normals. So I will strike you for seven. Discussing the resilience of camera. And he is dead. But not before I spend my final command point on Ethelon's demise. D3, three mortal wounds to you. Ouch. Icon Bear is going next. His first action is to ring his playbell. He's then going to move one, two circles to hit. And he's going to fire his bolt gun at the custodians. Crit and a hit. Block all of it. That's Custody's activation. He's gonna move and then dash behind the crate. Listening to the plague bell, he's gonna do a three circle move and a dash to here. Going through the door in the ruin. And he's now gonna plink away at the injured or rather wounded Custodes with his bolt gun. Two normal hits. Two saves. This Custodes is now gonna fire back at Plague Marine that shot at him in Overwatch. Three shots hitting on threes. Oh, Damn! Oh, 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 right. well, Two crits on a normal. I'll set aside a normal save. I'll block one crit. So. That is five eight wounds. Turns into six wounds. Plague Fighter's turn. He is going to plant the banner. He's then going to move two circles through the doorway and then dash. Just shy of this rubber bar. So, summing up turning point three, it's safe to say things didn't go too well for the followers of Nurgle. The Death Guards now have two dead operatives and only hold two objectives, one of which is in the Custodes half of the kill zone. This brings the Death Guard victory point tally to five. The Custodes, on the other hand, fared much better. They lost no additional warriors this turn and hold four objectives two of which are in the Death Guard half of the board. In addition, they scored their damage limitation tactical up, netting them 5 victory points, bringing their tally to 10. Well, this game has not gone as well as the practice ones. It looks like that first plasma shot of the game kinda set the tone for the rest of the Death Guard shooting, as it looks like my warriors loaded their bolters with BBs instead of 75 caliber munitions. Ah oh well, it's the nature of the game. Those who live by the dice, die by the dice. Let's try and score as many points as possible. Turning point 3 was very good for the Custodes. I'm up to 10 victory points and will try to score my plant banner tack op this turn. I'll be spending 1 CP on Aegis of the Emperor to try and reduce any damage that might come my way, but I'm saving the last one for a tactical ploy if I need it. I've lost the initiative again, but my plan for this turning point is just to hold on to as many objectives as possible to ensure I score as many VPs in the last turning point. Icon Bear is going first. He is going to move. One. Two circles to be just on top of the objective. He is then going to ring his plate bell and activate his icon of decay. First custodian's activation, this guy is going to climb, move to the corner of the crate and shoot at the plague fighter over here. Two normal hits. Block two. How many wins? Three. 
and chases him. He's then going to plant his banner. Marine with the bolter is firing at the wounded custodians. Three hits and a crit. So one normal goes through. Yeah. For three wings. Putting into two. Okay, next he's going to dash towards the barricade. He's currently got three circles of movement thanks to the play bell, so he's going to give up one to move two circles here. This Custodes is going to retreat back, giving up the objective, but trying to stay alive and move up to the barricade here, trying to keep out of range of the fighter. He is scrambling over here, and then is going to dash to here. For his final activation and the final activation of the game, Custodes leader is going to move forward and get within circle of that final objective. Okay, let's tally the scores. Before we get to the final scores, we hope you enjoyed the battle report. If you did, please consider clicking the like button and hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you want to be notified when our next battle report goes live. Subbing to the channel really helps us out and makes it easier for us to create more content like this. Totaling the final victory points for both the main objectives and the tactical ops, the Death Guard end the game with 12 victory points. The Custodes, however, scored an additional 7 victory points for a final tally of 17. While a fun experience, this game wasn't anywhere near as close as our two practice games before filming. The difference was the generally mediocre dice rolling the Death Guard were inflicted with this game. They've got the resilience, but slow movement speeds combined with largely ineffectual shooting really hampered them in this game. Anyway, that's it for this video. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. We'll catch you all in the next video.